Nobody has more respect for women than I do. Nobody. Hillary Clinton wants to abolish it, believe me. She wants to abolish our Second Amendment. I think they didn't deny it. I don't think anybody denied it. Other presidents did not call. They'd write letters, and some presidents didn't do anything. Many people have come out and said, I'm right. You really do have to ask yourself, where does it stop? Hello and welcome to the first episode of Fallacious Trump, the podcast where we use the insane ramblings of a tiny-handed narcissist to explain logical fallacies. I'm your host, Jim. And I'm your other host, Mark. A logical fallacy is an error in reasoning that results in bad or invalid arguments. And the logical fallacy we're looking at this week is the genetic fallacy. The genetic fallacy is basically where instead of evaluating the truth of a claim based on the claim itself, you base it on where the claim is coming from. All right, so nothing to do with genes. It's nothing to do with genetics except for the etymology of that word because it comes from Genesis, basically. It's the same root as Genesis, meaning beginnings or origins. So it's when we look at uh, a claim uh, or an argument and ignore the argument itself, what we're looking at is something which is actually not relevant to the argument it's where the Mm -hmm. uh, who is saying it where the um, initial idea comes from uh, or or in fact sometimes where the person comes from who's saying the argument trump is um as we will learn (laughs) over the course of this podcast (laughs) uh very keen on the odd logical fallacy which is the whole point of this this judge is giving us unfair rulings now i say why well, I want to, I'm building a wall, okay? And it's a wall between Mexico, not another country. But he's, not, my, he's not from Mexico. In my opinion. He's from Indiana. He is he's Mexican, Mexican heritage, and he's very proud of it. So this is from a, a CNN interview with mm. Jake Tapper where Trump was talking about the class action lawsuit against Trump University. And the judge in the case, Judge Curiel, as Jake Tapper says, is not from Mexico. He's from Indiana. But because he's of Mexican heritage, Trump decides that all of the the negative rulings that they're getting in the case are actually nothing to do with the evidence, nothing to do with the arguments that the lawyers make. It's because his family is from Mexico. But isn't the implication that it's because Trump's building the wall that the judge is because he's Mexican and the wall is being built between the US and Mexico, that therefore the judge is biased in his rulings because he is Mexican? Yeah, that's right. It's it's the... Yeah. Even though he isn't. even Well, he is of yeah. Mexican heritage. <laughs> yeah. And he's very proud of it. He is he's very proud, very proud of, it. of it. So, yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as far as Trump is concerned, or at least as far as he's arguing, um, that's enough. It, the, the fact that there would be animus there because of the wall and because Trump has basically pissed off all the Mexicans, um, that that is the explanation yeah. for the, the arguments that the judge is making, the claims um, and the, the rulings that he's making. Obviously... That's probably an oversimplification of the case as a whole. And also just a little bit racist. It is, yeah, yeah, a little bit racist. There's an element of the genetic fallacy in in racism where it is used to to disparage what people are saying. Yeah. Yeah, it's about the source. It's about looking at who is saying it, where where they're from sometimes, and, and dismissing the argument based solely on that and the genetic fallacy is it's a group of fallacies it's a type of fallacy um, and one uh, very common type of fallacy that falls under the umbrella of the genetic fallacy is called an ad hominem fallacy which is basically where right. you argue against the man ad hominem means latin for to the man um, a, rather than arguing against the argument right so the, the source of the argument is the center of your uh, dismissal of it, so the source might not be a person; it might be something else. That's right. Yeah. Is that right? So, okay, it, cool. I mean, a source might be the reason for the argument coming up in the first place. Like, for example, if you were to suggest that because someone came up with something in a dream, what they came up with is obviously wrong, because mm. the dream is where it where it originated from. It's the the source of the, right. the thought or the argument. So Trump is making the assumption that. Because this guy is of Mexican heritage, which he's very proud of, um, then therefore his judgments are somewhat flawed. It's not a genetic fallacy to base the assumption that the rulings are are fair on the fact that the judge has had to go through judge school <laughs> and deploy the full weight of the law in a uh, an impartial fashion. That isn't a genetic fallacy. It That's would called... be. 
referring to an expert. Well, Isn't yeah. It? It, it would be a fallacy if we said that because he's a judge, his rulings are definitely fair. If we were being right. absolute about it. Um, right. and, and that does seem to be the argument that Trump is making in the other direction, is, is that they're, they're having unfair rulings, in his opinion, and, uh, and that's because he's from Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Even though he's not, it's about the the difference between being a, a kind of a good critical thinker, being a good skeptic, and and what we're often told to do, which is consider the source, um, uh, and comparing that to actually um, relying on the source and saying that that due to the source you can make a decision on whether the argument that's being made is is true or false. Yeah. You can't often do that, but it is one of the things you should mm. factor in if you want to think critically about whether mm. an argument mm. is probably right or not. So, for example, uh, if we have a, a tweet from Trump in um, yep. June of 2017 about CNN, he says, and I'm, I'm going to do the voice, we'll see. Um, okay. Fake news CNN is looking at big management changes now that they've got caught falsely pushing their phony Russian stories. Ratings way down. That was all right. That was rather good. Thanks for like that. <laughs> yeah. I've been practicing. Um, so yeah. 20 minutes later, CNN tweeted back, CNN just posted its most watched second quarter in history. Those are the facts. So yeah. we have to then make a judgment on who's telling the truth because those two tweets directly contradict each other. Donald Trump says the ratings mm. are way down for CNN because of their their phony Russian stories. CNN says yep. they're the highest ratings they've ever had. So they both got a motivation to lie. Mm. Donald mm. Trump hates CNN and obviously he wants to discredit anyone who's saying bad things about him. Yep. CNN, obviously they want to be trusted by the American people and, and seen as a, a yep. responsible news source. The thing is that CNN can support their argument with data from Nielsen, which is a an independent well-respected organization that has recognized expertise in evaluating ratings that's that's what they do that's yeah. what they're set up yeah. to they don't have a reason to lie and exactly. CNN, yes they and, have no they have no knife to grind do they yeah exactly and nielsen supports cnn's argument they say that yes they did have the highest ratings that they've ever had so yeah we can look at that we can we can make an assumption um based on who's saying it, but that's not really good logic. That's not uh, something that's going to get us always in the right area. Yeah, because there's always a, f a feeling, there's a sense that there's an objective truth that's being diverted from. When you deploy the genetic fallacy, what you're doing is um, you're kind of bringing in some smoke and mirrors and you're diverting people from the actual objective truth so in saying when he does the well they're the lowest rating because they're because they've been pushing their russian phony stories well you, you can go and check you can yeah you can go and look these things up i mean there are times when you can check the facts and there are times when it's opinion you mm. know whether whether judge curiel's yep. uh, rulings are based on the law is something that a lawyer could look at the court transcripts and yep. and have a good guess at whether they are supported and whether they are actually reasonable and, and the kinds of rulings that a, a, an impartial judge might make. Um, but it's it's not quite as fact-based as, as something like ratings. If we have, a, we have another example, uh, another um, tweet from Trump this time in, in 2013. He said, the people that gave you global warming are the same people that gave you Obamacare. Right. <laughs> That's a typically with no context around there. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. It's kind of hard to say whether he's disparaging in this particular tweet, global warming or Obamacare. But it doesn't really matter for our purposes. Um, let's say, for example, that this is a tweet against global warming. What he's saying is that um, the, the people, it's, it's, so hard to pass this but the people that gave you Obamacare <laughs> exactly. i.e. presumably the Obama administration yeah. are the same people 
that are saying that global warming is real. And uh, and since yeah. Obamacare is such an awful thing, they're obviously wrong about this as well. Right. Yeah. I think that's what he's trying to say. Yeah. And he is basically asking you to kind of join in with him in his hatred. Because um, what he's doing... Yes. Because <laughs> what he's doing is comparing two of his own opinions. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> he's saying that, that the look, look at Obamacare, they can't be trusted to do good things, and they've, they gave you global warming. Now, I mean, they right. have to, yeah. you, have to, you have to ignore 70 plus years of climate science to believe that the Obama administration gave you global warming. <laughs> Invented but, it. Um, Only but, yeah, even less if you than four years what ago. What he means is yeah. they're the ones yeah. telling you it's real. Um. The, yeah. the fact that they also gave millions of Americans healthcare who didn't have it before isn't yeah. really relevant to to whether global warming is real or not. Yes, exactly. In order for you to get what he's even saying, you've got to buy into that one or other of those is a bad thing. Well, yeah. And, th and therefore, and the fact that because the Obama administration brought you one of these bad things, then the other thing is also bad. Yes. But crucially, even if it was bad, even if he actually mentioned a bad thing, um, <laughs> that wouldn't prove that the thing, the other thing he's mentioning is also bad. That if, if we said, yes. um, look, okay, Gina Haspel, new director of the CIA, um, ran a, a, a black site where they tortured Al-Qaeda prisoners. Um, yep. that's to ev to almost everyone objectively bad um, that doesn't yeah. mean that everything she does is bad or everything she's going to do moving forward it's it's a reason to maybe not make her head of the CIA arguably but it's it's not an indication that whatever the next decision she makes as head of the CIA will also be immoral and evil what it is and this is where considering the source comes in, is one of the right. things that you can factor in. And and where it becomes fallacious is where the, um, the importance of that information about the source is irrelevant to the matter at hand. So um, with, with that example of global warming and, and Obamacare, um, mm. no matter how bad Obamacare was in your opinion, um, it's completely irrelevant to whether global warming is real. Mm. So that is a genuinely fallacious mm. statement. There's no logical yeah. thread between those two things. Um, the, the Judge Curiel example, if you believe that his Mexican heritage made him possibly biased, then it's not completely mm. unreasonable to say that if there were unfair rulings... Mm that could be due to bias um, against Trump because mm. of the, the war. Mm. That's, it's not 100% yeah. unfair. It's, it's, a, it's a stretch, and there's a lot of things that you need to consider outside mm. of it that make it probably not the reason. Um, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. But it's, it's, it's closer to being fair uh, and logical. It's not logical still. Because of the reasons that we've already talked about, yeah. but, but there are. This is one of those yeah. slightly more nuanced fallacies where there are times where you can appear to be um, committing a fallacy, but actually, what you're doing is is thinking critically and 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 considering the facts. Thinking critically requires you to look at all the things that we we've just been talking about, like as a judge. It would be, it ought to be possible to, for another judge to see whether his his rulings have been, you know, uh, have followed precedent. And you know, it, the thing about making a ruling is that it's an opinion, yeah. but it's based on your legal training and your and precedents that are set before. So the, that's the critical thinking is to is to stop and and think. Well, hang on a minute. It ought to be possible to uh, to test that. Is it not more likely that this is the kind of thing that Trump would do 
you know, in, in all of Trump's activities, he tends to reveal a lot about how Trump does business. Um, so he would do exactly that. It seems to me that that's where it's coming from. So whilst, you know, it, it, we can see that there's a, it, it's not an out and out genetic fallacy like the Obamacare global warming one, which is just a, a, a logical step too far. This one has a logical step. But if it's true, this would require, you know, there ought to be, there'll be an outcry in the judicial service to say, blimey, we need to go investigate that judge. Then. Yeah, and there's a, there's a process Wouldn't as well there? in legal uh, system yeah. where you would be able to appeal a decision uh, and, mm. and claim that mm. the judge was, was partisan and, and that could be yeah. looked into. Um, so, yeah, it's... it's and do, does that system not involve going on CNN? The system of, of appeal. No. no, not usually, of, oddly. Of appeal, no. <laughs> oh, doesn't it? Oh, okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> you may ask why uh, why I would choose such a, uh, a nuanced logical fallacy for our first episode as opposed to a... Oh, I am asking you that. Are. Yeah, that's a, that's, a, that's a good question to ask. Yeah, because I could have started off slightly with more a nuanced. very, very clear one where it's obvious when it's happening and when it isn't. And the reason I wanted to start right. with the genetic fallacy is, is because... Um, if there are any Americans listening to this, which let's hope at some point there are, <laughs> um, they may think, yep. "What are these two Brits talking about our president for?" And and that's a reasonable yeah. thing to think. That's, um, yeah, yeah. And what gives us the right? Yeah, what yeah. gives us the right to to talk about their president and say bad things about him? Because we're gonna say bad things about him. <laughs> Um, and over the course yeah. of, are we saying bad things? Are we talking bad? Yeah, yeah. I think we're questioning some of his. <laughs> Things not necessarily saying bad things about him. Well, questioning some of his, let's wait and see. his motives. Um, but over the course of this <laughs> podcast, we are going to try and talk about a lot of the things that he, the, the logical mistakes that he makes, which are the reason we're talking about it is that they are logical mistakes that lots of people make uh, and mistakes that mm. it's easy to fall victim to and sometimes even um, commit yourself. And so we're not really well. We are totally picking on Trump. I was going to say we're not really picking on Trump, but we definitely are. It's the name of the show. Um, but, yeah, but it's yeah. okay to do that because what we're arguing against is the the lack of logic. We are, however, going to be expressing our opinion as well, and our opinion is yeah. is often going to be um, counter to to Trump's opinion simply because of the way we think, and that's okay because we're people. And we get to have our opinion as well. Yeah. So here's the point where it becomes relevant to the genetic fallacy is if you are an American and you have a problem with us giving our opinion because we're British, that's fine. That's your opinion, dude, and you're entitled to it too. But if you at any point were to suggest that the arguments we're making are not valid because we're British and therefore mm -hmm. we don't know what we're talking about, then you're committing the genetic fallacy. So... I would say listen to the arguments we're making and determine for yourself whether you think they're logical ones. And that is how you can decide whether you agree with us or not, rather than dismissing us because we're British. And if you think we've committed a fallacy in the process of talking about these fallacies, feel free to point that please, out. Please, please well. do, yeah. And we will argue with you about yeah. it, I'm sure. And now is the time, I think, for Mark's British politics. Corner. It is. And I'm glad you mentioned that Boris okay so here's my little scenario for you Jim someone in your neighborhood has had a window smashed there's broken glass and everything but in your neighborhood there's one guy who's trying to get somebody else in the neighborhood into trouble okay. he wants him to be blamed for the breaking of the window so he said to you yeah you know that guy we've suspected him of things before well it's got to be him it's obvious Look no further. There's no need to investigate. I'm sure you'll agree. And that's basically, you kind of go, all right, yeah, okay. I hear what you're saying. So my example of that actually happening in real life by at the hand of uh, our Boris himself is, um, is on the interview that he 
did on the 18th of March this year on the Andrew Marr Show, and he's talking about the uh, Skripal incident with the the two Scribbles, the mother and daughter, the father and daughter, who were uh, ostensibly poisoned by a nerve agent, which was then traced to be um, a nerve agent from the Novichok family, which was then announced to be the kind of nerve agent that I think the phrase they used was of a Russian source um, or of Russian origin. Um, so on the Andrew Marr show, he actually says the following. People have all now experienced, whether it's in America, uh, Germany, France, uh, say nothing of the, of the Baltic countries, the Balkans and and Poland, they've all experienced Russian meddling, malign, disruptive Russian behavior over the last few years. They can see a country that is going in the wrong direction. And that's why they're so inclined now to not to give Russia the benefit of the doubt and to stand shoulder to shoulder with the UK. So what he's saying is it's the Russians that broke the window because we've all had the experience of meddling from the Russians. Therefore, it's got to be the Russians. Yeah, so it's basically, you can't them, trust them, them Ruskies. So you can't trust they them. They probably did this oh, too. And, yeah, and he's, and, he's, and he's also saying that because we know we can't trust the Ruskies because we've experienced malign meddling. You know, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Uh, and we don't, we don't know who those people are. But they're the people who are now less inclined to give them the benefit of the doubt. And, and therefore, they're standing shoulder to shoulder with the UK. Many of those things are unverifiable. And in a way, he's saying that it's, it's kind of stupid of Corbyn at the time that this was going on yeah. to, to be yeah. saying maybe we should just look into it. And see if it's the Russians before jumping yeah, to conclusions. Just, isn't it? just so, exactly. Just hang on. Let's not be so hasty. Let's find out whether there is a real truth behind this. This is going back to uh, the objective truth that might exist behind it. You know what? What Corbyn is appealing to is whether we can find somebody like the Nielsen ratings people to say, well, yeah, here are the here are the facts. What Boris is not saying he's not saying let's find out what the facts are and let's see whether it was the russians that's what corbyn's saying which doesn't seem unreasonable to me because, because you know going back to our smashed window um example if somebody came up and said well yeah you know that guy that we've always suspected of being a bit dodgy um well he's the one that's most likely to smash this window and the first question you'd want to ask him is what makes you so sure just because he did it last time actually you're saying he did it last time so there's so many um, and the thing is i mean even away from the reality even if he definitely definitely did do it last time it may be that it makes him a reasonable suspect it may be even yeah. that in the absence of any other reasonable suspects in the area it makes it likely that he probably did it. But what you can't do is say that that means he did it. And, yeah. um, I mean, this is exactly why you can't introduce um, evidence of past crimes in court cases, because although if it shows a pattern of, of previous behaviour, it, it could be evidence, at least, not proof, um, that the person mm. is more likely to be the one who committed the crime. It's massively prejudicial, because any jury that hears that this person who's sitting in the in the defendant's chair did this kind of crime in the past the jury will be much more likely to assume that he was responsible for this crime that they're um talking about now and and that isn't necessarily true it's not logical to say that it's it's a higher probability perhaps but um it's it would be so much more likely to to result in in um unfair convictions that that's why they're not allowed to do it we are hardwired to look for patterns in things and use them as heuristics rather than doing the difficult thinking um and and actually searching around to find the real truth because it's much easier it takes a lot less brain space and a lot less energy to 
to use stereotypes, to use um, quick answers that are likely to be true. And it gets us most of the way there a lot of the time. And and the thing is here, um, it's it may be very, very, very likely that it's the Russians that did it. it that may be the case. And, and you know, I'm... I, I'm not going to say that it wasn't them. I'm not going to say that it was them. Absolutely, but but it's mm. from the the little that I know of it, it seems likely. But mm. what we're talking about is the logic of whether you can say um, whether you yeah. can stop looking, whether you can um, yes. just make just make a decision that you have come to a conclusion already, um, yeah. and and there there isn't a, a logical um, there isn't a thread that joins directly between those those thoughts between those pieces of evidence no um, you'd want to and which is what corbyn was saying and was vilified in the press i think he was called uh he was sajid javid who's a, a marvelously named well he's now the new home secretary uh in the uk he says corbyn has let the british people down by asking questions <laughs> yeah you know, so the 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 the, the well, my bit is the by asking questions, but if fundamentally, Corbyn is saying, "Well, hang on a minute, what you're doing there is is making logical leaps between bits of assumptions." What I'm saying is, let's go and look at the evidence. It may well a, be that the evidence a stark points difference for the Russians there as well between what Corbyn was doing and what Trump was doing when he was still claiming that, uh, you know, Putin said he didn't do anything to interfere with the election. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and Trump believed him. Because why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but Trump was not at that point saying, well, you know, yes, maybe it's the Russians. We need to look into it. We need to be investigating it and check out what we can find out. What he was doing was deflecting largely Mm. And and saying, yeah, was, you know, Trump, Putin's told me it wasn't them, so it wasn't them, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, yeah, which is which is quite different, really, because Corbyn has not, I don't think, said it's not the Russians, or he doesn't think it's no. the Russians, or he doesn't see any reason to no. believe it's the Russians. Uh, he has, I think, from what I've seen, only said, let's not jump to that conclusion without looking into it. Exactly. I think what he's doing is, um, you know, he's cautioning that we should do it, shouldn't do anything hasty uh, until we find out. Yeah. OK, so we're going to look at some examples of the fallacy in the wild. Mark, I believe you've been working on a sting for this. Yeah, here it is. And here we are witnessing the fallacy in the wild. Rawr. Okay. <laughs> I think we'd, yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd nailed it, definitely. You're going to do that live every week? I've, it'll get better every week. <laughs> okay, cool. So, <laughs> yeah, politics isn't the only place to find logical fallacies. Uh, so we're going to try each episode to find uh, examples that are outside of politics. Sometimes it might be religion, for example. Sometimes it will be pop culture. Kyle just told me some really bad stuff about her. Like, like what? Like she's really mean and she's overly critical and and no, she will paint a room a really bright color without even checking with you. Okay. And she uses sex as a weapon. Fine. Thank you for warning me. At breakfast I'll be on full alert for room painting and sex weapons. You're still gonna go out with her? Yeah. Well, didn't you hear what I just said? Thebes, come on. I mean, consider the source. Of course her ex-husband's going to say that stuff. So Ross, who is a scientist, actually uses <laughs> the phrase there, consider the source. And, and what he's doing is considering that because the person who is saying all of this stuff about this woman that he wants to date is her ex-husband, therefore it's not true because he would say that. Of course his, her ex-husband is going to say stuff like that. Um, and yeah. there is this is one of those nuanced parts of the the genetic fallacy. That's a reasonable argument. the The place where it becomes a fallacy is assuming that that information is false. If 
you can say that we can't necessarily trust the information. We can't take it as, we can't assume it's true. But in assuming it's false, you're committing the genetic fallacy. Um, and and Ross was absolutely still happy to go out with this presumably very attractive woman because um, he assumed that everything that was negative that was being said about her was not true because it was coming from her ex-husband. Which actually, because it's a comedy, uh, it's a comedic device to do that as well. So he actually commits the fallacy of believing it's all to be false, which sets him up to actually be on the receiving end of some of this stuff uh, later on. So he's warning against committing the logical fallacy of believing it's to be true, but he's committing the logical fallacy of dismissing it all as false, based, based on the same thing. Yeah, and in this episode, in fact, um, Phoebe is dating the ex-husband, and so she is assuming all of this, this stuff is true because it's coming from him and she's dating him, she fancies him. Um, so she, she's doing the yep. exact same thing in the opposite direction. Um, and this kind of uh, specific kind of genetic fallacy where the argument is that someone has a motivation um, to, to say negative things or to, to make a particular argument and, and because of their motivation we can dismiss the argument is uh, is a particular kind of ad hominem fallacy actually it's called ad hominem circumstantial um, but that uh, ad hominem fallacies only work when you are assuming something is not true because of the kind of person that it comes from um, where you assume that something is true then that's actually specifically a genetic mm. fallacy that doesn't fall under the ad hominem. There's a, an example here from South Park which covers that off nicely. You see, guys, this is why Jews can't be ninjas. They've got no spine. You don't know anything about Jews, fat ass. Oh, yeah? My mom took me to see Mel Gibson's movie The Passion, and Mel Gibson says you are snakes and you are liars. And if the Road Warrior says it, it must be true. <laughs> so, it must be true. If the Road Warrior says it, it must yep. be true. So, um, and this is pretty pretty good example of the genetic fallacy, really, because it, it does, um, it is a positive thing. Cartman is saying that um, it's, it's true. He can assume that, that Jews are snakes and liars because Mel Gibson says so. Um, and <laughs> yep. that's great. And um, also it covers what, what we talked about before where it becomes a fallacy. The, the more irrelevant um, the mm -hmm. kind of authority, if you like, of the source yep. is to the argument. Um, the fact that the road warrior says it has really nothing to do with with the yep. moral makeup of the Jewish which people. Is, which is what, um, and that's that's the source of the comedy. Irrelevant. So this it is, is uh, this is massive juxtaposition between absolutely, you know, the 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 history of uh, opinions held against the Jewish people and and the road warrior. So we're going we're gonna to play fake news, folks. I love the game. It's a great game. I understand the game as well as anybody. As well as anybody. Okay, so this is a game in which I read three Trump quotes, two of which are real and one I made up, and Mark has to figure out which one is fake news. Yeah. So, yep. is it number one? Right. I'm not going to do the voice for all of these because it's very tiring. Oh, okay, thank God for that. <laughs> How does he keep it up after all this time? Yeah. I don't know. It's amazing. Yeah. Number one, you know, I was saying it the other day because we're doing a tremendous amount of work in space. I said, maybe we need a new force. We'll call it Space Force. And I was not really serious. Then I said, what a great idea. Maybe we'll have to do that. Or is it number two? Before I was president, I had a lot more time on my hands, which, by the way, are not small. They're totally normal. If anything, a little bigger than average. And I've never had any complaints, if you know what I mean. Believe me. Or is it three? Nuclear is so powerful. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago. The power. And that was 35 years ago. He would explain the power of what was going to happen. And he was right. Who would have thought? But when you look at what's going on with the four prisoners, now it used to be three, now it's four. But when it was three, and even now, I would have said it's all in the messenger. Fellas, and it is fellas, because, you know, they don't, they haven't figured out that the women are smarter right now than the men. So, you know, it's going to take them about another 150 years. But the Persians are great negotiators. Well, the, all right, yeah. So the first one, the Space Force, it sounds like something that you would write but I, I uh, um, 
Oh, I think he's. Oh, I think he said that one. Uh, the second one, I know for sure he said that because I've heard it. Um, the third one, though, there are massive amounts of leaping around like he like he does do. I think the 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 nuclear leap over to Korea and the hostages and then off to Syria and then uh, women and then Syria I think that's too many things so that's why I think it's three okay so you're confident that number one is something that Trump said yeah okay let's play this you know I was saying it the other day because we're doing a tremendous amount of work in space I said maybe we need a new force we'll call it the Space Force and I was not really serious and then i said what a great idea maybe we'll have to do that he did say that and yes oh my god space force no. space force space, space force yeah he, he's yeah. just he's just been watching the tv all his life hasn't he yeah that's absolutely so everything he does is based on tv yeah so yeah he did say number one that was, that right. was great and and you think number yeah. two is real i think number two is real because He's even bragging about how average his hands are. Yeah. yeah they're tremendously, um, they're astonishingly average. They're, I have to tell you, yeah. I, I made that up. Oh, no. Wow. Bloody hell. Well done. So, God. So, that uh, is so the, good. The third one, however, wow. is real. No. Nuclear is so powerful. My uncle explained that to me many, many years ago, the power, and that was... 35 years ago, he would explain the power of what's going to happen, and he was right. Who would have thought? But when you look at what's going on with the four prisoners, now it used to be three, now it's four. But when it was three, and even now, I would have said, it's all in the messenger. Fellas, and it is fellas because, you know, they, don't, they haven't figured that the women are smarter right now than the men, so, you know, it's going to take them about another 150 years. But the Persians are great negotiators. I haven't edited that, edited that at all, I swear. Wow, that is just brilliant, I, isn't it? And I have to oh say my that God. is just a section of a longer rambling speech that he gave. That it goes on for kind of two or three minutes like that, just leaping from place to place, I, like he's on something. No. Just things are light in his head, and then he goes, "Oh yeah, that's a oh yeah, that's a good idea." And then he got, adds another little sentence to that. Yeah, he's wow. like the dog from Up. That's what it is. He's easily distracted. Awesome. So I am now undefeated at fake news. No, that's very exciting. I can't believe that. That second one is very well written. Then I mean, the third one, I'm going to have to look look out for your deviousness a bit more because anything that's scattery and nuts. It's going to be true, isn't it? Well, I, I, yeah, probably. And I'm going to get some help. So podcast <laughs> listeners, I need your help to, to fool Mark on a regular basis. So if you think that you can make up a convincing fake Trump quote, then share this episode on Twitter, include your quote and the hashtag fallacious Trump, and I'll pick the best one and you'll be podcast famous. Okay, so it's time for the section of the show that this week is called Leaking is Not a Logical Fallacy. Um, this is where we talk about some of the crazy shit that's been going on in the White House. And um, we can't talk about everything. We don't have time. It's, there's so much. It's seriously, even <laughs> trying to talk about the crazy shit that happens in a day in the White House, we would, we would, not, we would run out of time. So we have to pick something to talk about. And the story that I want to talk about this week is is the leaks, which are an ongoing problem in the White House. It's quite amazing, the the number of leaks that are coming out. And um, there was one particular leak that happened a couple of weeks ago almost, where in a, uh, a meeting of White House aides, um, they were talking about the confirmation of Gina Haspel, the CIA director. Uh, mm. And someone talked about how John McCain was against it, because he has been tortured and he knows what it's like and he uh, has spoken out against Gina Haspel's views on torture and her, her inability when questioned by the Senate to, uh, to come out against torture and to call it immoral. And 
a an aide called uh, Kelly Sadler made a joke. She said that it doesn't matter what McCain thinks because he's dying anyway. <gasps> so uh... now the White House. This is this is almost two weeks ago. The White House have still not apologised for this, um, and they don't seem particularly upset that it was said. What they are very upset about, though, is that it was leaked. Yeah. Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Which is by far a more heinous crime. Oh, absolutely. Sarah Huckabee Sanders it was absolutely incensed about this, apparently, and um, mm. she called a she called the entire. Uh, White House communications team together and had a meeting about it and told them how upset she was, how furious she was. She said, I'm sure this conversation is going to leak too and that's just disgusting, according to a source in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and the brilliant thing about this is that there was, a, there was an article in Axios about this and it says, Sanders' prediction came true, obviously. What follows yeah. <laughs> below is a leak from that very intense meeting yesterday, according to five sources in the room. <laughs> well, that's not a leak, then. That's not a private meeting. That's a press conference. This is the, the, the entire White House communications department consists of about two dozen people. Right. So this is one fifth of all the people <laughs> who were in that room are talking to Axios about it. That's brilliant. But so, what if one fifth talking to Axios? Who are the other five, four fifths talking to? The first reporting of this was in ABC on ABC. Right, right. Um, but then, uh, the the fact that that literally a, f- a fifth of all the people in the meeting were <laughs> were talking to journalists pretty much immediately wow. after the meeting wow. uh, is is absolutely amazing. And you the thing you, about you, this, they might as well just do it in the open air. Yeah, they, they practically are. Meetings. They they almost are. It's yeah. oh my god, it's amazing. But the, the thing about this is, if you want to avoid people leaking stuff you're talking about, you have to be a good leader. You have to be yeah. someone that people that inspires loyalty in people. If you are insane yeah. and and evil <laughs> and do things that people in the room think. Oh my god! I have to tell someone about this. That—that's how this happens. And and just going back to the actual note about well, it doesn't matter what you're saying. He's dying anyway. Well, we all are. So we we can dismiss anything that anybody says. Trump has, in fact, um, just in the last couple of days, he has supported Kelly Sadler and said that it wasn't a joke. She was just stating facts. So that's okay. Okay. What yep. the, uh, so it's a fact that, that he it doesn't is, matter. He is dying, so it doesn't matter. That's what that's, that's what I take it to mean. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, anyway, Gina Hasper has been confirmed now, so it literally doesn't matter. And finally, some things we really don't have time to talk about. Jared and Ivanka partying at the new US embassy in Jerusalem while Israeli soldiers killed 62 Palestinian protesters in Gaza and injured thousands more. Trump demanding an investigation into the investigation into his campaign. Michael Cohen accepting millions of dollars from organisations looking for insight into the Trump administration. Revelations that Don Jr. attended another secret meeting before the election, this time with representatives of Israel, Saudi Arabia and the UAE who are offering to help Trump win the election. Trump pestering the Postmaster General to double the postal rates charged to Amazon, presumably just to piss off Jeff Bezos. I love that one. Trump pulling out of the summit with Kim Jong-un after North Korea called Mike Pence stupid. Trump picking daytime TV pseudoscience peddling quack Dr Oz to serve on the Presidential Council for Sports, Fitness and Nutrition. Yet another school shooting which Republicans have blamed on abortions, Ritalin, schools having too many doors, teachers not guessing the shooter would do this, despite the fact he wore a trench coat to school sometimes. It's not guns, though. Definitely not guns. Definitely not guns, no, no. So that's all the bad arguments and faulty reasoning we have time for this episode. If you hear Trump say something stupid and wonder if it's a fallacy, email us on fallaciousTrump at gmail.com or find us on Twitter at Fallacious Trump. And if you think we've used a fallacy ourselves, let us know. 
And if you've had a good time, please give us a review on iTunes or support the show on our Patreon page at patreon.com slash ftrump, where you can get some exclusive content and other cool stuff. All music was by The Outburst and was used with permission. So until next time on Fallacious Trump, we'll leave the last word to the Donald. That's right, go home to mommy. Bye. Bye!